Let us have a quick look at blocking option available in model tree. If we right click on blocking option in model tree, we will find various displaying options in blocking. The most important and frequently used option is index control. This is used to make desired blocks visible. We can play with visibility of blocks. Even many operations can be applied to only visible blocks. The shortcut key for enabling the index control is I on your keyboard. The window highlighted in slide replicates this option. We can see that there are I, J, K dimensions with some numerical value and arrows provided. Now these I, J, K dimensions represent directions of block in X, Y, Z direction respectively. By clicking on arrow, we can either increase or decrease number of blocks in desired direction. There is something called O-grid which will be discussed later. By practice, we will be accustomed to these options. The vertices option in blocking allows us to play with visibility of vertices. Below are details of various buttons under this. By enabling on surface, we can turn on vertices associated to surfaces. By enabling periodic, turns on vertices which are assigned as periodic. By enabling names, displays names of vertices. By enabling project type displays all associated vertices whether it is associated to point, curve or surface. They are tagged as P for point association with red color, C for curve association with green color, S for surface association with white color, V for interior vertices with blue color. This color code helps us to ensure association is done. The edges option in blocking allows you to play with visibility of edges. By right clicking on edges, we get different options such as association, bunching, counts, projected edge shape, color by count. If we enable show association, it displays associations of different edges to curves. This helps in knowing whether any edge is missed to be associated and even whether edge is properly associated to desired curve. By enabling bunching displays no distribution on edges. By enabling count it shows number of elements of edges. It gives numerical value of bunching. By enabling projected edge shape it displays edges after measures computed with current node distribution. This helps you preview shape of topology to be taken by geometry. The faces option in blocking allows us to play with the visibility of faces. Here again we have below visibility options, periodic faces displays periodic faces of blocking. By enabling face projection turns on faces associated to surface part. By enabling boundary displays only faces that lie on outer surface. The block option in blocking allows us to play with visibility of whole block itself. We have following visibility option, solid, whole blocks, no shrink, worst, ijk, blanking, blank pop. Solid makes model visible in solid color. Whole blocks displays each block in black icon. No shrink shows actual size of the block. Worst highlights element with worst value by calculating determinant value for each block. IJK displays the IJK orientation for each block. Blanking unblanks previously blanked blocks. Blank blocks blank selected blocks. Under the blocking option we also have the pre-mesh tab. This allows us to play with visibility of mesh generated. By right clicking on pre-mesh tab, we get different options such as wireframe, solid, recompute, show size information, convert to unstructured mesh, convert to multi-block mesh, no projection, project vertices, project edges, project faces, etc. Wireframe option displays model in wireframe. Solid shows model in solid mode. Recompute recomputes mesh. Show size info reports number of nodes and elements in message window. Convert unstructured mesh converts blocking to unstructured mesh. Convert to multi-block mesh writes out multi-block mesh for current blocking. 
Under pre-mesh, we have different preview mesh options available. By enabling no projection, we can preview mesh without any projection. By enabling project vertices, we can preview mesh with vertex projection. Vertices on edges of blocks will be projected to curves or surfaces to which they are associated. By enabling project edges, we can preview mesh with only edge projection. Nodes on edges of blocks will be projected to curves or surfaces to which they are associated. Face mesh will be interpolated. This option is generally used for 2D models. By enabling project faces, we can preview mesh with all projection assigned. All face nodes and edges will be projected to their associated curves and surfaces. This option is generally used for 3D models. Difference in these options can be easily understood from figures shown. This particular figure is with no projection. This is with vertex projection. Edge projection looks like this and face projection which has all projections associated with it. Next within the pre-mesh is scan plane option. The scan plane option plays major role while troubleshooting for mesh quality. First of all, it should be clear that scan planes are view for pre-mesh. It displays internal volume grid. By applying select button, we have to select edge whose plane is normal to selection. This plane will be displayed on the screen. There are three selection fields for displaying scan plane in each of principal direction i, j, k. There is a major and a minor index for each scan plane. The major index is block number in which scan plane is displayed. The minor index is the node number within block. We can play with plane position by increasing major and minor index. This is a really good tool to diagnose bad quality mesh element. Now we are moving to the actual blocking operation. Let us start with creating block. This is termed as initializing block. The initialize block option allows us to create an initial block. We can initialize blocks with different options such as by 3D bounding box, 2D planar and 2D surface blocking. The 3D option allows us to create a 3D block enclosing selected entities. If no entities are selected, block will encompass entire geometry which is generally preferred. It also gives us provision of generating initial block whose vertices will be moved to nearest location. This can be done by enabling project vertices. The orient with geometry option if enabled tries to find best fit of geometry in any orientation and to create smallest block possible around the selected geometry. The 2D planar option allows us to enable creation of a 2D blocking around geometry. In case of 2D problems, it is generally recommended to generate mesh in XY plane. The 2D surface blocking allows us to create automatic surface blocking for surface only mesh. It creates a 2D block for each surface. This can be used to convert 2D to 3D. Now let's get an overview of the blocking process. It generally follows below process. First, we initialize the block. Then we decide approach of blocking that is either top down or bottom up. Once blocking topology is decided, we associate vertices and edges to points and curves. Then we decide node distribution on edges of blocks that is to define mesh. Then we preview mesh, check quality of mesh and if needed improve quality. Once appropriate quality is achieved, we write out output file which will be input for solver. Now let us see how we can create 2D blocks in 2D blocking once it is initialized. The mapped option allows us to create 2D blocks from any 4 specified vertices or 2 vertices and 2 points. From 4 vertices. We need to select vertices in order such that 3rd vertex selected should be connected to 1st and 4th vertex should be connected to 2nd respectively. from two vertices and two points. Here we have to follow order as well. 
only difference is instead of last vertex says we have two points. This option gives us more freedom to create 2D block in space. Another method by which we can create a block is by extruding the face of an existing block. This extrusion can be done by different methods. Interactive method. In this method, we have to select face and drag it up to desired length. This doesn't have provision of extruding in desired shape. This allows us to extrude face in normal direction. Next is fixed distance. We select the face to be extruded and specify distance from normal extrusion. The next one is extrude along a curve. This is an interesting option and it has more flexibility. This option allows us to extrude face up to desired length and can also take shape of target curve. For this, we need to select face to be extruded, curve along which extrusion is to occur and end point of, of the curve. It also has provision of dividing created blocks in number of layers as shown in figure in order to take the shape of geometry. Another method of blocking is creating 3D block from 2D block. The 2D to 3D option allows us to convert 2D or surface blocking to 3D blocks. Different ways we can do this is by first fill. The fill option converts surface blocking into 3D block. This requires a close volume of structured and or unstructured surface blocks. It can produce a structured blocking if all surface blocks are structured, four-sided blocks, otherwise unstructured or swept blocks may result. Next is translate. It extrudes a 2D block into 3D in the given direction by given distance. The last option is rotate, which creates 3D block by rotational extrusion of a 2D block as shown. Now let's move on to splitting operations and blocking. We are going to explore in detail various options available to split blocking. The following is a list of operations in blocking functional tab as we proceed from left to right. Split block, O-grid block, extend split, split vertices, split unstructured face, imprint free space. Now let us see how to split block. There are different ways in which blocks could be split as per requirement. Split block option allows us to split blocking at selected edge. There are various methods to split block such as all visible split, screen select, prescribed point, relative, absolute and curve parameter. All visible splits all blocks attached to a selected edge. Selected option splits only selected blocks. We can select edge from the screen by left clicking on edge and move on the screen to adjust location and then middle click completes the operation. We also have provision of splitting edges through a desired point by selecting prescribed point in drop down list. We can even split edge with given parameter by selecting relative in drop down list. The parameter value lies between 0 to 1 where 0 is start of edge and 1 is end of edge. The curve parameter option allows us to split edge through a selected point on curve. First we select the edge to be split and then the curve at a point through which split is done. Please note here that split block option will only propagate splits through mapped faces and will terminate at free faces. A special type of split in ICM CFD is O-grid. Let us look into detail what O-grid is and what is its significance. 
An O grid is a series of blocks created in one step which arranges grid lines into an O shape. The O grid block option allows us to modify a single block or blocks into 5 sub block topology in 2D and 7 sub block topology in 3D. Now a question may arise that what is the need of this type of split? We need to ensure that curvature is captured properly. There may be corners of block lying on curve resulting in highly skewed elements as highlighted in figure. Hence, to avoid skewed elements formed at corner of block, it is split in such a way that curvature can be properly resolved along with good quality mesh. Another important use of O-grid is it improves efficiency of node clustering near wall that is very fine mesh can be generated near wall to capture the physics. The advanced topology of O-grid are C-grid and L-grid. C-grid is called half O-grid and L-grid is called quarter O-grid. These are obtained by manipulating O-grid. C-grid consists of four sub-block topology in 2D and six sub-blocks in 3D. L grid consists of 3 sub block topology in 2D and 5 sub block in 3D. There are different ways available to create an O grid. To create an O grid, first we need to select a block or blocks. The block selection can either be done by parts or all visible or by selecting around faces, edges or vertex. We can also make individual selection of block. We also have provision of creating O grid around blocks by enabling around block offset option. Around block offset option if enabled specifies height of O grid layer. Offset behaves like a relative distance. A value of 1 causes hexa measure to place O grid at a location where resulting block will be distorted least. A higher value makes inner block of O grid smaller with surrounding blocks larger and a smaller value makes inner blocks larger and surrounding blocks smaller. We also have provision of specifying absolute value that is actual length of radial edge of an O grid. Now let us see how faces help in creating O grid and other advanced topologies such as C grid and L grid. Let us take a simple case of a cube on which O grid needs to be created. The O grid of a cubical block will result in 7 blocks as in 3D. Now, let's say if we merge one of the inner face of any block among the 7 blocks with the respective outer face of same block, then it will result in 6 block topology as shown in figure. The resultant topology is called C grid or half O grid. Similarly, we can think of L grid. Thus, when we select face of block as highlighted in figure, O grid passes through selected face. This is how face selection helps in O grid operation. There are many applications, especially external flow applications such as flow over body in which we need to create a very fine mesh near walls to capture the boundary layer. In such cases, grid around body should be of good quality, preferably with no skewed elements. Around blocks option allows us to create O grid around selected blocks. As can be clearly seen in the figure shown, a O grid is created around the selected block. We can do very fine node cluster in edges of blocks. Let us see simple illustration of usage of the around block option. Figure 1 shows one of topology which can be a result of splitting of blocks and rearrangement of vertex. This topology is acceptable and if we preview mesh resulting from this topology then we will notice that there will be unnecessarily increase in cell count if we have captured the boundary layer on walls. Even it will result in skewed cells at sharp corners. This can be prevented by creating O grid around blocks of aerofoil. The resultant mesh can be previewed in figure 2. Thank you for viewing this particular session in our lecture series. If you have any queries, please post them on our e-learning portal.